This is the latest computer simulation. It shows that when the projectile strikes, it doesn't much matter whether it strikes on land or in the ocean. It heats the ground tremendously, just like a, a super bicycle pump that you've pumped up. The, the temperature gets up to 100,000 degrees. After it reaches this temperature, it expands out at high speed and throws material out several times the Earth's radius into space. At the same time, it brushes the floor of the impact crater away, throws it out at high speed, and removes about six miles of rock from the impact site. Calm down. Easy there. I'll get this car fixed and I'll take you with me to the tan. Upon impact, the comet releases energy equivalent to more than a hundred megatons of TNT. Come on, Maria, pick up the damn phone. <laughs> The crater at this stage is about 60 miles in diameter and it's lined with partly vaporized and even melted rock. At this stage, the crater begins to collapse under gravity. The floor rises, the adjacent terrain collapses into the cavity, and we're left with a, a lake of lava 100 miles in diameter. It only takes a couple of seconds for these enormous temperatures to cause an expanding fireball. This fireball is hot, initially 10 times hotter than the surface of the sun. Anything within 1,000 miles that sees that fireball will be incinerated. Houston is obliterated within seconds. The effect of the impact is felt at once, thousands of kilometers away. Oh no. Impact. That was the EMP wave. The EMP, or electromagnetic pulse, destroys all electronic equipment. Charged particles create effects similar to gigantic polar auroras. Sound. They are harbingers of the coming disaster. The tremendous amount of energy involved in an impact of this magnitude uh, would cause the release of charged particles, uh, in particular electrons, which would be moving around very, very rapidly. And these particles would give rise to very powerful electric and magnetic fields, which would induce currents in uh, any sort of uh, electrical conductor. Anything containing a computer chip uh, would probably be destroyed. Silent, invisible, the EMP races around the world. Hey, Sean, come look at this. A cloud of dust and ash has reached Hawaii. It brings a salty, dirty rain that burns the skin. Traces of this phenomenon can be found in geological remains of disasters all over the world. Jan Smit 
specializes in analyzing the geological traces of the impact at the end of the Cretaceous period. We have here a special core from the Atlantic Ocean, just one of the many. You have here the slowly deposited uh, sediments of the latest Cretaceous of the Mesozoic era. Every 10 centimeters is a thousand years or so. But then 65 million years ago, we see this layer of green spherules and, and brownish stuff, and that was deposited only a few days, which demonstrates the enormous power of the impact some 3,000 kilometers away. Only the poorest of the poor remained in New York City. During the next hour, everything will suffocate under a thick coat of dust and ash. But the next stage of the catastrophe is already underway. When the comet falls into the shallow water off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, it creates a wave almost a kilometer high. This initial wave immediately breaks down to 30 to 50 meter and loses more height when it runs into deeper water, but it conserves its energy. Geophysicist Robert Weiss is an expert in the origin of tsunamis. The wave height goes down in deeper water, but it created a longer wavelength. And this wavelength travels to the coast. The tsunami is not the flow of water, it's a flow of energy, which means that the water particle transfers its energy to the next one. The approaching end pressures water on the front of the wave and builds up a gigantic wall of water. The tsunami hits a ravaged landscape. What is left of the coastal areas is drowned in the floods. The water surges hundreds of kilometers into the interior. The tsunami waves leave the Gulf of Mexico and propagate into the Atlantic Ocean. The gigantic waves simply roll over the Caribbean islands and race along the east coast towards North and South America. A peripheral wave six meters high crashes into New York. a hundred kilometers long, surges through the streets for hours before it begins to ebb. Waves cross the Atlantic at over 500 kilometers an hour, heading for Africa and Europe. The waves are still almost as massive as when they began. Cities such as Dakar and Lisbon, then Bordeaux and Brest disappear beneath the deluge. Despite warnings, many people have remained in the coastal areas. In the Pacific, there is no tsunami. Wait! Come on! 
shot. But the temperature soon rises dramatically. Rock vapor condenses into small particles. Those small particles will re-enter the atmosphere all over the world and cause the most serious global problems of this impact. Unbearable heat all over the world. Within minutes, the sky seems to be burning. The scorching heat takes both people and animals by surprise. The Barker people have never experienced anything like it. They perform a ritual to break the terrible spell. Outside temperature is now over 100 degrees Celsius. Even in the observatory basement, the effect of the rising firestorm is obvious. Okay. The heat is created by rock vaporized during the impact and hurled out into space. What's really going to cause the Earth problems is the high-speed ejecta that falls all over the Earth. This stuff uh, has condensed from the vapor, it forms tiny little particles, and rains back into the atmosphere all over the Earth. At the same time, there's a lot of rock debris, fist-sized fragments that, that fall in here and there around the Earth. But the dangerous part is really these small particles. While the particles penetrate the atmosphere, they uh, heat themselves up, and that causes thermal radiation that bays the surface. Uh, the, the surface temperatures may rise uh, as high as six or 700 degrees. Uh, that will cause forests to burst into flame. Any unprotected animals, human beings uh, that can't get under cover will uh, essentially be roasted alive.